now that we're familiar with the terminal and more of what you can do with the terminal, let, let me talk to you about version control. Um, for version of control, I want you to think back to when you were writing your college admissions essays. Uh, when you were working on these essays, you might have been keeping multiple iterations or drafts. Maybe you would write your first draft and you would send it out to your, uh, maybe your parents would read it or something or your friends or your English teacher would read it. And then maybe you would make revisions and you'd save it as a new draft and send it again. The same exact thing can be very useful for when we're writing code. And especially for keeping different versions of code. And the reason we'd want to do that is because one, if your current version of the code somehow accidentally gets deleted or modified in a way that you don't like, you can go back and get a previous version. Uh, the most recent version, hopefully, if you're making kind of saving frequently. And then second, if you make some changes that cause bugs in your code, which is much more frequent than you would think when you're working on a big system, you can undo what you've done by just reverting to a previous version. So version control, super useful idea, super important um, idea, especially in code. This is what Git and GitHub are. And you may have heard of Git or GitHub. These are tools for doing version control of software, the source code for software. Um, two separate tools that you should know. One is Git, and Git is the actual version control software, which handles storing layers to your code. So all you see is just the current state of your files. But in a secret directory, Git keeps all the previous versions. And what, what marks a version? Well, you specifically mark when you want to save something as a version of, of your code. Um, GitHub is then a cloud storage provider for git versions and so github is where you upload and sync your local kind of revisions up to the cloud there's actually alternatives to github that are talked about much less frequently including gitlab and bitbucket but the other place where this is useful is if you're collaborating with someone else you almost always will be using github you would, on your computer, be using Git to make changes and have revisions, and then you would upload those revisions to GitHub, and get, uh, like that is where multiple people's code comes together and kind of gets merged. Uh, especially working in the professional world on Teams, GitHub is where you'll go to see what someone else proposes to change to the like official version of the code, and you will approve or deny it there. Uh, I'll point out here, these are actually slightly different tools, even though people use these synonymously and they call both, these are both version control. They'll say, learn Git or learn GitHub. We use GitHub, we use Git. Most of the time people are using them synonymously, but they are different things. And that was very confusing for me when I started. And so I want to point it out to you. Git is letting you keep track of the history of your changes. And it's on your computer. Git is on your computer. And it actually creates a secret folder that stores all the previous versions of, of your code. Whereas GitHub is a website and a company with servers where you can upload all the versions of your code and then you can collaborate with other people. And as you make changes locally, you push them up and then you can pull down uh, changes that your, your collaborators made. Uh, and so you just noticed me using these words, pull, push, very common words when you're talking about uh, Git and GitHub. But as a core collaboration tool, this is the general workflow. There's some source of truth on GitHub, which is this repository of code. And you will pull down all of that code, including all of its history. On your computer, you'll make some changes. You'll code something up. You commit those changes, which creates a new version of that history, like you know, version 10 or version 11 or version 12 of your code, of this, this code. And then you push the new version of the code back up to the cloud. And so when you have collaborators, what this will do is it'll uh, create a something like a, a, a pull request or a, or a merge request that then 
whoever's working on the code with you will then review and approve or deny. And they'll say, okay, I agree, this should become an official version of our code. And so that becomes the newest version. Now you might ask, Alex, what happens if both I and my collaborator make changes at the same time and push them up? That's the nice thing about Git, is Git and GitHub handle that merging for you. As long as the changes made to a file um, are not on the same lines, it's actually really easy to merge changes to the same file if you know, I change lines 5 through 25 and you change lines 100 through 110. That's OK. If both of us are changing the same lines in the code, then it's really hard to merge. And then Git and GitHub, or GitHub will, will ask you specifically to fix that. And that's called a, 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 a merge conflict. And you can read more about those online. Um, of all the tools that I'll talk about today, I guess they're all really important, but but maybe this is the most important. Uh, every single job will require that you know this. Every single job. There are alternatives to GitHub. So I mentioned them, Bitbucket and uh, GitLab. And there are other some proprietary ones at big companies like Google. There are also technically alternatives to Git. Um, there's something called Atlassian. Git, Git is basically universal. And so wherever you go work, anytime there's more than one engineer working, you'll be using Git and probably GitHub. So if I had more time in this class, I would sit down and teach you how to use this. Uh, I highly recommend that you go through this tutorial here or any tutorial or video tutorial online on Git and GitHub um, to learn how to use it because it will come up and you'll need to know it for any kind of internships or any kind of group work. And finally, GitHub is also really handy for showcasing your projects. Because as you write code locally and you push it up, you can host it publicly so other people can see your code and then they can see the kind of code that you write. Um, and so most software engineers put a link to their GitHub um, on their resume. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit of um, what GitHub looks like. Uh, so if I go to github.com, maybe we can see, um, probably see my profile here somewhere. Yes. So this is my profile. And here you can see, this is like, this is the link I would put on my resume perhaps. And you can see some of the repositories that I've created that are public. And these are just little projects. Again, it can be feel kind of intimidating when you first start off because your profile will be empty and you'll look around and you'll see, first of all, my profile has like 22 repositories. That's, you know, and I'm not even a huge user of, of GitHub. Some people have lots and lots and lots of stuff that they're, they're writing and putting up on GitHub all the time. Don't feel intimidated. It just accumulates with time. And so just create a GitHub now. And as you make little projects, put them up on GitHub. Um, I'll point out that you need to be careful with school projects. You need to check with your professor if it's okay to put up. Uh, oftentimes it is, sometimes it's not because any projects that get reused, you don't want to show up publicly like this. Um, and so for example, when I was taking my data structures course, I created some code that lets you visualize how a particular ty type of search works. And I explained what the runtime is and I gave some examples here. Um, if you look at my code, this is just the code. It's, it wasn't even that much. It was like 50, 50 lines of code. I wrote it out one evening when I was just trying to visualize and better understand how an algorithm works. And I decided, you know, it only take me another half hour to write up a description for this project and put it up on GitHub. And so I did. And now people can see this. You can see this was six years ago in 2016 when I was taking, um, a data structures and algorithms course. You can also see on here this view of contributions. This is all from the class website. And so the, cl my, the class website is, is hosted here. And I, I, I go on here to uh, make changes. And example, when I put up lectures, um, I am actually editing a file on GitHub. And then when I push that file, GitHub actually handles rebuilding the website for me. Uh, I won't take the time today to show you how to actually initialize and create a repository or how to push and pull 
for that, I encourage you to take a look at this tutorial link. But if we had another couple weeks, I would absolutely show you.